Our second scripture lesson this morning comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 1. And I'm going to be reading verses 18 through 25. Matthew, the first chapter, beginning with the 18th verse here, the Word of God. Now, the birth of the Messiah took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took her at his wife, but had no marital relations with her until she had born a son, and he named him Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. There was a survey taken some years ago, and it had to do with sermons that people hear on Sunday mornings. And this was a well-designed research model, and the idea was to see how much do people remember of the sermon they hear on a Sunday morning. Or maybe to put it a different way, how much do people forget what they hear? And so the model went like this. They had a group of people who right after a service, they were asked to fill out some questions about the sermon to see what they remembered. And then late that afternoon, that Sunday afternoon, they had to fill out some other questions to see how they were doing with their memories. And then they had to fill out a survey the Saturday before the next Sunday and I would share the survey results with you, but they're just too painful as a preacher to, to just speak. It's very painful. And when it comes to what people forget about sermons, those results are something preachers probably just as well want to forget. Well, I was putting this together this week. Then I had this delightful experience at our session meeting this past Thursday evening because we have elders share the job of sharing devotions each month. And wouldn't you know it, the elder sharing devotions referenced a sermon that had been preached here in November. And it was preached by the Reverend Paula Cooper. And so thank you, Sue. You, uh, you brought back some hope uh, to those of us that share these words. What is it that, that we remember or how much do we seem to forget? Well, I put myself to the test and I want to see, can I remember much in the way of sermons, say, from my youth? I spent a lot of time. In church, my parents were new to the church when I was in my childhood, so they wanted to make sure we were there. And so I heard a lot of sermons growing up, so I tried to think back, what can I remember from all those years sitting in the pew? First of all, I remember one very distinct illustration that was shared during a sermon But the only problem was that it was during a lay Sunday, and it wasn't the actual preacher that shared it. So that that didn't give me much encouragement. But I remembered another piece of a sermon, and it actually had to do with this passage from Isaiah, where the prophet is saying, is it not enough that you weary mortals, but that you also weary mortals? God. 
you also tire God out. Behavior. And something struck me as a high schooler. I was like, oh, no. You know, my behavior tires out God? Now, my parents tried very hard, and, and I think they really were good parents. But there was a phrase they would often use, and I don't think it's recommended for parenting. Did, did you hear this phrase going up? My parents would often say to my brother and I, my brother and me would say, you know what, we are just sick and tired of this behavior. Did, did you? Does that sound familiar to you? After the 8 o'clock service, somebody came up and said, you know, there's another one that used to really get me. You know, you want, you want to cry? I'll give you something to cry about. <laughs> I, I am I'm just sick and tired. I heard that growing up. And so when I was in a worship service and heard this passage and the preacher talk about it, that you weary, you tire God out, I'm like, oh my gosh, God is, is tired of me. You know, I I knew my parents were tired of me, but I was kind of hoping God wasn't tired of me. But see, this was the the message of the prophet. Um, It has to do with with forgetting. See, we, we understand this on a very practical level. Now, think about your own household and the people in your own household, how quickly you can become tired or weary when members of your own household continue to forget things. I, I think you know what I'm talking about. You know, they forget to, you know, they can't take a plate and put it in the dishwasher. You know, they, they put it on the counter or they can't take anything out of the dishwasher or their clothes can't make it to the hamper. They have to leave them laying there And this goes on and on. They just keep forgetting, and it keeps what? It keeps just making you tired and weary. You know, how many times do I have to go over this? I'm just getting sick and tired. No, don't say that. I'm sorry. Of of your behavior. Now, I know we have a lot of college students that are are home, so give them a break, though, okay? It's going to take them a while to remember all the things they're supposed to be doing at home. But see, this was the message of of the prophets. And what Isaiah was saying to the king, you you, you have made tired by how much forgotten. You've made God tired by forgetting the power that is present in your covenant relationship with God. You could ask for a sign, and you're not even willing to do that. See, the prophets came on the scene to remind the people of Israel that they had made a covenant with God through Abraham. There had been this covenant made that God would be their God, and God would bless them, and they would prosper, and they would be given a land. But then the people needed to respond with their worship of God and knowing they only had one true God. And this was not an equal partner covenant. God was willing to go so much further because of the power that resides in the divine. And God understood that. God was going to go so much further, but then this is what people needed to do to live in the land, to prosper. And guess what? They just couldn't do it. They keep forgetting. They would just keep forgetting what it is that God had provided for them. And it would just become tiring when we just forget time after time after time. And see, here's the thing. Because of their forgetting, they were taken out of this land. They were taken from all that God wanted them to have. And they were dragged off into exile because they just couldn't remember. They kept forgetting what they had agreed to do. I think about our, our lives. We, we flail around through life. You know, we've been dragged to other places. We've been dragged to other lands, so to speak, because we forget. See, God, God didn't forget us. 
In fact, God broke into, through the power of God, God broke into our very lives. Uh, Jesus comes into the material, physical world. God didn't forget us. We see the power of God at work through Jesus transforming lives, touching the least of these. We see the ultimate display of power in the resurrection of Jesus, even defeating the power of death. There is no greater power. This is what we know as the new covenant. We participate now in this new covenant, the very real presence of the living God. It in powers us for our lives. As we connect to this power, as we're engaged with the living Christ, we have this kind of power in our lives, and it brings us back from all those places we've been dragged off to in exile. Uh, It brings us back because of our very poor memories and how much we forget what God intends for each one of us. Through the new covenant, Emmanuel, God is with us. This power, this power, this kind of power is at your disposal. If you but remember this very real presence. Well, I thought about taking a survey to see how much of this sermon you're going to remember. I thought about questionnaires out in the narthex. And then maybe calling a few of you later on. (laughs) I mentioned that after the 8 o'clock service that I I wanted to maybe call and check if you remembered my sermon. And one person said, what sermon? So (laughs) (laughs) You you are going to have a test this week, though. Um, I am sure that just living the life's that we live, you will have a test. And here is the question. Can you remember the new covenant you participate in, the very real presence of God, the kingdom power that has come, that you have within your lives? So, I don't know what it's going to look like for you, the challenge that you will have this week, but I know you will have at least one. And so that's going to be your time, your test to show, yes, I I remember that I can be connected, plugged in, engaged in the presence of Emmanuel, God with us, God with me in this very moment. Through the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Amen.